So today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, a couple different JavaScript libraries that help you to not write JavaScript. So basically, um, I'm going to talk about Hotwire and how I used it as in my side project, what I think of it, and also a new one that I've been playing around with, which is called Unpoly, as well as a little bit of HTMLX. So let's get into that. And uh, if you like, <laughs> please give a like and uh, subscribe, and I'll, I'll do all that if you like it at the end of the video. Um, I'm very new at YouTube, so this is going to be... So first off, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, why you would want to do a server rendered app at all. <laughs> I'm going to try to make this brief. I can't, I don't have time to go into it fully, but just briefly, basically I used to work um, at a SaaS company and basically they had a front end that was written in React, used Create React app, back end was written in Linux, Elixir in Phoenix, and it was great uh, for the most part, but they also had a lot of people. They had over a hundred developers and they spent a lot of time running front end code and they also spent a lot of time writing uh, React Native code and they spent a lot of time writing back end code. And when you're in that kind of environment, it's kind of, you kind of don't notice if there's, there's waste because you have back end developers I mean, everyone was a full stack developer, but usually you kind of ran this thing where it's like, we can parallelize the work if you make the API and make I make the front end. And that's good. If that's you're in an environment, then maybe parallelism is more important than overall speed. But as I got into my side project, that's not as much the case. And if you work at a small company where there's not a lot of developers to go around, also not the case as well. Um, so basically, what am I talking about now? So basically, what I'm saying is like, normally servers are just APIs, they're generic, you send up HTTP requests to them, and then they'll send you back JSON. And then that JSON gets rendered in the browser, all the HTML is contained inside of JavaScript that eventually gets downloaded, the JavaScript turns that HTML back into real HTML, and sticks it in the DOM, and then manipulates it from then on. And yes, there is fancy server rendered frameworks that allow you to, to compile your React components down to HTML and then have all your, have your cake and eat it too and whatever like that. But still, they're at a point right now that they are still very complex and they still require you to do a lot. And at the very least, you're still replicating server state and client side state to some degree. The level you do that at is also the level of complexity that you're accepting most of the time. Uh, for my side project, I realized very quickly that I wanted very little code, very little complexity, a whole lot of app. Um, if you're making something super simple, if you're making a to-do list, a very simple to-do list, or, a, a, you know, Pomodoro timer, for instance, uh, although there is complex ones like that, uh, shout out to session, for instance, um, they... They don't really, they don't have a lot of screens. They don't have a lot of state. They probably aren't going to be a big deal if you make three different versions of them or you rewrite the whole thing or if you spend a lot of time crafting it in React, right? So that's not the kind of app I was building. I was building one that had lots of models, lots of state, lots of pages. And that's what I wanted. I wanted a web app. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about some of the different frameworks that are involved in this. So if you're in this situation where you do want to lower complexity, HTML rendering saves a ton of complexity because you don't have to write an API. You just take database stuff, you put it in HTML, it gets, the browser loads it up and you can render, and you can also do a lot of like stuff like, you don't have to pull stuff out of forms and send it, you know, and serialize it properly, then unserialize it properly when you get it back from the database and like keep this the global state or this global cache or, you know, you know, there's all sorts of crazy stuff you can do in the front end. And let's just imagine a world where all you do is you click a button, it sends an HTTP request to the server through a form request, and then it just returns back HTML and that's it. Simple, very simple. Uh, doesn't require really any JavaScript most of the time but these JavaScript libraries help you make it heighten the experience. So that's the thing I think is important to realize. A lot of times I think server rendered apps kind of suck 
because they can they can suck and still work. Uh, meaning, like I can throw together one that full page reloads, but it works. And for a lot of businesses, they're like, "That's good enough." So I don't care that it's ugly. <laughs> we can still use it. Um, what I want to do is basically take any experience where it starts to suck and polish it. Add a little bit of JavaScript, add a little bit of magic trickery from these libraries I'm going to talk about, and heighten that experience. Sometimes you even go as far as creating mobile views, for instance. We'll talk about that. So let's first talk about Hotwire. So here's Hotwire for you. So basically, Hotwire is a framework made by Basecamp. Uh, they basically allow you to, to basically um, take your normal server rendered app. And by the way, in like Rails and other things, they usually have ways to just generate a HTML rendered app and without any work on your part. Basically front end to back end, right? Basically this just kind of adds a little a bit of extra JavaScript on top to make it nice. So how does this work? So let's go into Turbo. Turbo is kind of the core of it all. So let's go to the reference just to kind of get an idea of how it works. So the first thing you do is um, there's a lot of interesting concepts in here, and it's a little hard to understand at first, maybe. Uh, my computer is really going slow right now. Um, so the first part is just turbo drive so basically what happens is when you click on a link it downloads that over ajax or over fetch i guess in this case and then swaps out the html of the page it basically swaps out the body of the html that's it very very simple it does it all for you you don't have to do anything except install it and put it on the page yeah it's got a, a bunch of other kind of crazy stuff like turbo frames so basically this is kind of like an iframe except it's not an actual iframe. So basically, like if I ha had a form that submitted, basically it would grab this ID, it would match it in the HTML that of the next page and just swap out that only that part of the page. So this is really nice if you want to just say like, I'm going to modify the name of a blog post or I'm just going to modify the name of what to do in line without having to go to a whole separate other page. Um, I guess you can do some caching associated with it. The other cool thing is they actually, so this is the, one of the most important parts of Turbo that it's important to realize is that they have mobile apps libraries. So basically you can create a fully native app, include their library in your fully native app, and then take these HTML views and turn them into native transitions. So you could basically, for instance, you could pull up like, uh, like if you were going to modify, you had a list of some things like just imagine you had a list of items in your shopping cart and you wanted to pull one up you could pull one up in like a mobile view that like slid up that you could pull down for instance or something like that you could do that with turbo uh, that's probably the biggest strong suit and actually the reason i went with it for my side project is i wanted to have a nice clean mobile app turbo streams are also kind of interesting uh, basically they allow you to do some dom manipulation on the page so basically this will take this HTML and append it to a div that has ID, has a, um, a div with ID on it. So basically, if you do an HTTP request, then it'll append a div onto the page. So if you do two, and then you do that. You can also do it with WebSockets. So you can listen to whenever a chat message comes in and append a div of the new chat message onto the page. So it's really easy with a little bit of code to make a real-time rendered app here. Uh, then you have the Turbo Native, which I talked about already, really cool. Uh, if you want to make something that works on basically every platform, so you, you use Electron for your native app, website, it's already a website, then you use their frameworks for iOS and Android, you can wrap up a Turbo app pretty fast and make it look really nice, add some mobile navigation, and add some uh, you can even add some no native views if you want on the really nice parts, you know, to really brighten it up on certain pages. But you can mix HTML and native really kind of easily with Turbo. I think it's going to be even better once they release the Strata part of it, which maybe they will by the time you watch this video. But yeah, so that's cool and all. But what if I need to do something more compl complicated? That's stimulus for you. 
basically stimulus is also very simple um the demo here doesn't really like do it justice but more or less like if you do data controller hello then it just finds the fact in your that it just finds the file that says hello controller loads it up and then calls the actually it doesn't have the connect function here does it well anyways more or less it calls a connect function which usually i use the most often and then if you do this data action click then that will call this function here and you can have you have access to the actual um to this thing that you hooked up the hello data target or the hello output target wherever that went um yeah i guess it's actually just yeah there's an output target so basically you could create something like this where you click the button and it does something over here really it's just like kind of lets you just have at it with the dom nodes and stuff and once you learn the apis to them you can replace the inner html of stuff you can you know, call some JavaScript library, like a sorting library on HTML. You can do drop zones. You can do all sorts of stuff with this. It's really a very simplistic thing. It just lets you attach some JavaScript that connects and disconnects when you leave and enter pages. That's all it does, really. Uh, very simple and very easy to learn, honestly. Like, once you get the hang of it, it's very different than React. And honestly, you like, the, the biggest learning curve you're going to run into is the fact that you don't know how JavaScript works or HTML works. Uh, that's what I found for myself. So, okay, that's cool and all. But I have used these on my side project and there is some annoying parts of it. One of them is it's with Turbo, it's really hard to make a three pane layout or things that load up in a modal. Like if you pull something up, open in a modal, it's really hard to make that thing in the modal have a URL unless you replace the whole page as HTML, right? Um, it's annoying. And, uh, you know, and they've taken a stance at Basecamp that, you know, they don't really do that kind of view. That if you're visiting a page, just visit a page. Don't pull it up in a modal. It's kind of a weird experience. And that, that totally could be valid. But Unpoly is kind of awesome. This web page is really complex and maybe hard to understand the, the benefits of it. But this is kind of an amazing framework. It, it doesn't sell itself good enough. So, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the way that this works. So basically, if I click on one of these guys, this is actually a separate HTML page. Not only that, it's replaced the URL up here. So if I, re if I refresh the page, I'm still on the same page. It's just, it's basically turned this into a modal, this, this thing, see, same page. And I can click out of here and it also updates the URL. This is all server rendered stuff. It's just, trickery on top of server rendered stuff and so there's another really cool thing about it is it actually does some fancy stuff so if i low if i hover over this link and if i push my mouse down at all it will immediately render the page see that it rendered it as if it was in already downloaded and you know why because it was <laughs> So basically what it's doing is that when I hover over this link, it automatically starts downloading the next page without me having to do anything. And it also binds not to when I push mouse up, which is the default for links, but when I push mouse down, so that it creates an instant interaction for something that was completely server rendered. It had to go to the server and do it. Um, it's a little hard to see, but if I refresh this page and I click on this really fast, see you know it's i can't even do it honestly let's try this again yeah you know, it's just too fast for me honestly you might see a little bit of a delay uh but basically yeah it doesn't really allow you to do it so unpoly makes these kind of things really easy to do it also is kind of cool because it allows also some uh some really kind of it, it one thing that is unfortunate perhaps about Turbo, but also nice, is it doesn't really have like a big JavaScript API. You don't have to memorize a huge API with this. On Poly, you don't necessarily have to memorize everything about it, but basically everything in this framework is laid open to you. So if you want to do something, if you want to add something, or if something doesn't work for you, Unpoly is very extensible and, and allows you to do kind of anything you want. Uh, another thing I really want to show off, I don't know if it'll, it has a, Pretty sure there was a demo somewhere but yeah like using this you can make a really 
really fast thing. You can even do custom transitions between pages, for instance. Um, they have a really great, uh, yeah, they're, they're really great. I, I honestly think, I can't say enough of, of how cool this library is. The other really cool library is HTMLX. So let's talk a little bit about that. So basically, it just makes HTML <laughs> work better, more or less. Like, just, just look at this little code right here. So you include HTMLX on the page, and then you do, I want, when I click on this button, I want to post to this endpoint. And what, what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to swap the outer HTML of this button. So more or less, it's just making an HTTP request, swapping this button out. Simple trickery to make this do something really cool, right? So let's look at some examples. It allows you to do a lot of this kind of stuff. So let's say, let's do the inf infinite scroll one. Why not, right? So yeah, so like trigger. So when, when this thing is revealed, then we're going to swap out after the end of this table, we're going to get it from this thing, right? So basically, when I scroll to the bottom of this table, it loads. Just because we wrote this simple job, this HTML is all you need to enter, to create that interaction. Like you just trigger, like when this table row shows up in the view, go load it. That's awesome, right? Uh, you can even do things like web sockets, all sorts of stuff. Uh, there's also a really cool thing called HyperScript. This is in beta. It's You can't really use it yet, but it's really kind of cool as well. It is a separate programming language, but it's really kind of easy to read, which is fun. This is on HTMLX after onload take dot selected for event dot target. And then, yeah, I guess, I guess, I'm not exactly sure what take means in this situation, but I guess, okay, so it's saying, um, yeah, more or less, it swaps out these divs with an HTTP request. There might be actually even simpler way to do that, honestly, but yeah. Um, yeah, so this also is kind of a cool thing. You can extend HTMLX with your own JavaScript, so you could say, um, let's see. So yeah, if you do class sortable, I see. So when HTMLX loads, it looks for dot sortable and adds this library onto it, which is a good library. I've used it before. And then now I can just, you know, do this. So yeah, pretty cool. There's so yeah, more or less, this is kind of like one of those things where you're like, I if you're a tailwind guy or something like that, I'm a tailwind guy or girl. Um then yeah, like web sockets. You can do web sockets with it. Like anytime that you get something, it returns that. I mean, it's just so many cool things you can do with this. So more or less, those are the three libraries that I think are really leading the pack right now. So hopefully that gives you a good overview of what they're all useful for. Um, yeah, so tell me if you like this. Uh, tell me if you want me to do more of this. Like, subscribe, whatever. Um, obviously not the best at this yet, but I'm learning. So there you go.